And now joining us in the Hyundai Texans Radio Studio, head coach D'Amico Ryan. Coach, great to see you. Hey, great to see you guys. All right, following the win over Tampa Bay and in advance of going to Cincinnati, but let's start with what happened against the Buccaneers, coach. And I want to start here, Dari Agunbowale, because I have to think that that whole dynamic of him having to kick really fired up the team and got everybody extra laser focused. Am I right? It did. It, it provided a spark to our team. You look at our kickoff huddle <laughs> before yeah. they had to go out and knew Dare was kicking. It was just a juiced up huddle, right? We didn't, you don't know where quite the placement is going to be on the kick, but we know we're going to go down. We're going to cover to the best of our ability. So it started there and everybody was so excited just to see Dare. You knew you had to do a little bit extra when it came to covering the kicks and he did an outstanding job for us. Coach, when you call for the field goal, yeah. what are you thinking at that point? Like, it's 30 to 30. We're, what, eight minutes or so left in the game? What are you thinking when you I just sent out a running back to kick <laughs> the go-ahead field? What were you thinking at that point? I was, I was thinking we were going to score. Yeah. <laughs> Touchdown, hopefully. Yeah. And we did, and we kind of got pushed back a little bit there. Yeah. And at the end of uh, talking with Coach Ross, Knowing that, hey, we were in Dare's range, range yeah. and he, he's he's on my headset saying, hey, he he was three or four from here. He was three or four as he's warming up. <laughs> so that that's ringing in my head, and I just decided at that time, like, man, we have to get points here, and yeah. just having a faith that Dare had worked it. He came back out, you know, before the second half started, yep. warmed up, made a couple kicks. He was feeling good about it, so I was confident that he would make it from that range. This yeah. might be a silly question, but can Cam not kick off for you? Sometimes punters can kick off, and kicking a field goal, I guess, would be tough for him because it changes the whole operation with the holder and everything, but can you answer that? All right. Uh, Cam hasn't kicked off for us, so that's okay. one that we haven't, haven't done before, and Cam is – more so focused, you know, on the punting style, the mm -hmm. Aussie punter style, and that's where he has his focus. So would not want to put Cam in that situation where he's not comfortable. I've, I've got one more about the field goal because I saw the reaction shot of you as the <laughs> ball goes up, and I see you looking up. It goes in, but your face is still stoic. I don't think you cracked a smile until you saw the reaction that the team had right. to Dare kicking that field. Yeah, goal. it was uh, <laughs> it was a cool moment, right? Uh -huh. Seeing Dare, he did the Steph Curry like walk off, and just <laughs> yeah. seeing, I just <laughs> saw how crazy our O line was going, and the crowd was going. Our entire team, the sideline, just went crazy, and that's when I was able to crack the smile. I was just like, I can't believe we're here right now, but wow, what a moment, Coach! I I don't want to keep hammering this, but right. I asked you just a little bit after the game. Not so much, you know, Dari, but the Dari situation and how it impacted how you guys coached the second half. I would imagine, you know, you went for it. You you went for two each time you scored. You got two quick touchdowns in the third quarter. You're hot. You went for two each time. How did having Dare kicking as opposed to Kaimi kind of change your philosophy, your strategy in the second half? Second part of that is I know you didn't want to see the Bucks score, but was there a part of you thinking – Okay, they went up by four. I know I have to go out and get a touchdown as opposed to am I going to have to make a decision to let him kick a game-time field goal? <laughs> right. No, it was. Uh, it definitely changed our game plan completely when we lost Emi, knowing that, hey, well, let's go for two. Right? didn't want to put Dare out there too soon, just allow yep. him to keep warming up. And, you know, our offense, they were, they were rolling. They were rolling in the second half, and they were hot. They had the hot hand, wanted to keep riding those guys and see, hey, we can get two points. That would be awesome for us. So strategy, all of that yeah. completely went out of the window, yeah. right? And uh, they did a good job on being able to convert one of our, our two-point conversions there. Um, and just seeing, like, that last drive, right? And <laughs> I think Frankie was still thinking we needed a field goal. He was like, hey, we can get to his reins. I said, hey, coach, we, <laughs> We're done we need a touchdown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't need Dar right yeah. now in this moment. So knowing that we had to go down and score – I mean, I was I was happy that they that we let them let them score on the pass. I was like, okay, thank you. We have time. We right. have we have uh, timeouts. So hopefully we can create something. Just yep. to, I just wanted a crack at the end zone, yeah, yeah. and we were able to get in the end zone, which was awesome. Coach, someone was asking me who's the leading receiver for the Texas. Who's the number one receiver? And I said, everybody. It's a <laughs> band. Everybody participates. How do you see it? Yeah, I see it the same. All of our guys have been very consistent throughout training camp. They've been all been consistent. They've all been reliable. And you look at it, you got Nico, who's made big plays, Tank. Now Noah stepping up, making big pay plays for us. Robert makes mm. just all around. And when you have an offense 
who you can't just as a as a as you're being defended, right? You can't just hone in on one guy. Oh, we're gonna take away Nico. Well, we have multiple guys who can make you pay. You have an offense with multiple weapons at the receiver position. It opens up the entire defense for you. I know we've gone far enough in this interview that if people are listening, our fans are listening, like, what about CJ? Ask about CJ, guys. So I'm going <laughs> to ask you about CJ. But I'm asking you about this, Coach, because we talked about this in the first quarter. CJ, he missed the long throw to Tank, and we just kind of felt like that and a couple others, like, is he off today? Is there something mm -hmm. kind of off like, it's just not looking the same. And then the throw to Noah on the crosser, when he hit him in Strata, I was like, no, nah, he's all right. <laughs> but did you kind of sense that, that maybe he had a little bit to start? Like, I don't know, jitters, nerves, whatever, just kind of off a little bit. And then, boy, he found his groove the rest of the way. Yeah, he definitely felt that. From the first play of the game, he got him and, you know, Tank is wide open. And right. we kind of miss one. We miss one with Tank on the, on the sideline. Or Tank drops one on the sidelines. It's like, uh, you know. Yeah. Are we going to get going? But I love that, you know, we stayed aggressive, right, with letting CJ throw the ball and giving him those opportunities. And the more time on task, you saw him just get more comfortable, yep. and he was able to make some big-time throws for us. Yeah. All right, we'll get back to him in a moment. But on the defense, because you took some losses in the game, safety position very much tested. How helpful was it having DHC, who had been here before and knows the system at least, didn't have a lot of time in it, but had some time. How much did that help you out? And can you just talk about the injuries and next man up? All right, it was very unfortunate, right? We lose Jimmy, and then the next play in, MJ comes in, we lose MJ, and you know, we have DHC who just got here <laughs> this week. So it's kind of unfair to put him in that position, but we're happy that he's been here before, a very smart player, who we trust, who's going to be, you know, in the right spot, be where he's supposed to be. And uh, unfortunately, he had to go out there and play for us. Wasn't expecting mm -hmm. that. Wasn't expecting that to happen. But, you know, he was a reliable guy that we can count on. And with the injuries, it's just tough, right? It's our trainer continued to come up to me throughout the game. And it's this guy. This guy's out. I'm like, wow. Like, what? Well, this day isn't going mm -hmm. great for us. I'm happy we were still able to overcome all of that adversity and come out with a win. Yeah, you need a resi for the blue tent. My gosh, especially when Jimmy goes out, MJ goes out the next play. And then DHC went in, Coach. And I actually thought about I thought about him as the game was going on, and I thought about you because you've been in this building. You've been the one making calls and communicating when this building is rocking and it's loud, and it's great to have that energy, but yet it's tough on somebody to communicate. And it was one of the things I, I watched yesterday, tried to watch, when he got loud, watching the linebackers really be demonstrative about their communication. How did you feel with the crowd being the way it was? How did you feel like that communication was between all the groups and with some new safeties? I felt like the communication was really well uh, this, this past Sunday, probably one of the better games we've had when it came to communicating. Guys were locked in. They were on the same page for what we were asking them to do. So from that standpoint, it was really good. Our crowd definitely makes it hard on us yeah, <laughs> defensively right. to communicate, but that's how we want it. Yeah. And that's how we talk to the guys throughout the week. Hey, we have to be loud in practice. That's why we crank the music up as loud as possible because we know when we're at home, it's going to be loud on defense and we have to be still be able to communicate. Yeah. Noah Brown talked to us about CJ adjusting a route in the huddle, telling him, hey, run this one, what was it, two or three yards shorter or whatever because they might be on to it. He's seeing things like that, Coach. And what do you see in week to week? Because we always say everybody's got to get better, right? Every right. player has to try to improve. And he's doing that within the context of his rookie season. It, it takes, you know, it takes time. It takes that confidence of knowing, right? First, you have to know what the exact the play is, right? And how can you adjust it? So him knowing the scheme, knowing exactly what we're asking him to do, and for him to have the wherewithal to think, okay, let's adjust this route, because of this particular coverage, it just shows, you know, how smart the kid is. It shows how he study, how he's mentally prepared each and every week. He knows the looks he's going to get, and he knows uh, we need to make an adjustment here so we can make the defense pay. So it's encouraging to see. You don't see that much from a young rookie quarterback, but it's encouraging to see the growth each and every week from CJ. All right. I don't want to put Tampa Bay completely in the rear view here unless yeah. Mark's got a few more questions, but we kind of <laughs> have to do that because we got to start thinking about Cincinnati and yeah. get on to Cincinnati. Just a really good football team, Coach. I know there are a bunch of them in this league that are good, but this team, you watch them last night against the Bills, and they do some really, really good things. Haven't seen Joe Burrow. I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've seen Coach Burrow or, Coach, or Joe Burrow coach against him. Thoughts about Early thoughts about the Bengals, and you know, I'll wait into the film, but your early thoughts about the Bengals. Yeah, it's heavy passing attack, which is something different that we've seen in, in yeah. previous weeks. So we know their pass-first offense. They're going to rely heavy on Joe Burrow. 
he's done a great job. Young quarterback, he's came in and they've gave him like more ownership. The more he's played, he's got more ownership of the offense to where he can call it from the line of scrimmage, change plays at the line based on, you know, single high, two high. He He's a very smart player. He gets his guys in the right position, all right, to make a play. So we're going to have to do a great job defensively, like with our disguise and what we're doing, being on it with the coverages. We have to be tight this week because they yep. have a lot of playmakers all across their offense. Yep. What is your reaction to heading into the game with the Buccaneers, both teams? defenses are tied for sixth in the NFL in points per game allowed. <laughs> so I'm thinking, all right, this is in the high teens, maybe low twenties. <laughs> and then that erupts in the fourth quarter. You put up 17 yourself in the fourth quarter. What is your reaction to all that? Is it the NFL just go with the flow? What's going through your mind during that coach? Every week is <laughs> you never know every week. I don't think myself or Todd was thinking it was going to be that way. Yeah, you thought yeah. it was going to be this defensive like battle going mm -hmm. back and forth. And then offenses, they just explode. But I also think it's, you know, for us, right, in our defense, we have to play better, right? Some mm -hmm. things, some plays, we're in position that we have to make. So we have to step up. We got to play better, especially going against, all right, this high power Cincinnati offense. We have to be much better than we were last week. With the points you guys put up, with the way Cincinnati could put up points, I think it might be the opposite of, oh, this could be a shootout sort of thing. Yesterday, when did you realize, Coach, okay, boy, this better be a shootout. We better get ready. We better, <laughs> we better have everything in the holster ready to go because they're firing, we're firing. Boy, this could be a lot, high, a lot more high scoring than I thought. Did you ever have that kind of that thought pattern of, oh, boy, this could be, this could be that kind of game. We might have to think this way. I have felt like we were going to be good and we were going to get over the hump there. And yep. then, you know, we give up the long touchdown to Mike Evans. And I'm like, oh, come on, slow look. It's going yeah, to yeah. be a long day. We yeah. need you guys. I had to step up and make some plays. But uh, it just wasn't quite – we weren't quite making the plays that we should have made. Yep. And then we were not good in the red zone. I thought defensively we did a really good job on third down. Yeah. Right? They only converted three third downs on us. But when they got in the red zone, I mean, they were, I think, four or five in the red zone. So we had to do a much better job there. What can you tell us about this, Coach? Because I think we discussed this in the preseason, but now that we're well into the regular season, uh, your headset, the voices in your head, the communication with the offensive coaches as Bobby is calling the game, and how does all that work, and what do you like to hear? Because i got to think you could hear whatever you want, but you want to <laughs> tune certain things out and hear uh, maybe a streamlined conversation. Tell us. All right, so there are multiple channels on the headset, so when the mm -hmm. defense is up, I'm on the defensive channel, and – I'm giving the plays. We have guys upstairs who are giving me the personnel, right, what they've done out of certain formations or sets within those plays. And then when the offense is up, I click over to the offensive channel, and now I can hear slow it, give the call. I hear the guys giving the defensive personnel, who's in the game, who's out of the game, what coverage they're in. So it's a lot of chatter going on yeah. on the headsets. And, you know, I like to still listen to that on both sides just to make sure mm -hmm. I know what's going on. Hey, Bobby, are we good with this play? Time is running down. Do we need a timeout? You think we're going to get mm -hmm. it off? So it's just – it's constant <laughs> – it's constant uh, just chaos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Control chaos. I would say that on the headset. So you have multiple channels. You have Multi the radio broadcast on there? Yeah. Too? No, not really. <laughs> no, you don't that. want on the radio <laughs> broadcast, <laughs> Coach. You don't want on the radio uh, broadcast. You're like invited any time, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're invited. <laughs> there's no doubt. But you already got enough voices in your head, like you said, which – I can imagine just trying to – I mean, is there any point where you're there like, no, I don't want him in, or I don't want that – no, boo, I want this guy in. Do you, do you kind of have those moments or you just kind of let your guys go? No, it's, guys a go, go. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a lot, it's lot of that. It's a lot of that on the headset. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 can get, it. it can get crazy on the headset, there's yeah. no doubt. Um, Cincinnati, uh, we talked about offensively what they've got defensively um, on that side of the ball. I think they're probably better than people think with DJ right. Reader. Um, I think they're good in the secondary. They showed that against the Buffalo Bills. What kind of challenge is Bobby going to have and CJ going to have in the offense against that particular defense? Yeah, they do a really good job up front. Reader, Hendrickson, they do a really good yeah, job yeah. up front. Uh, just you're going to get multiple looks. I think Lou has done a really good job of calling it, giving you mixed looks. I mean, dropping different type of uh, simulated pressures, yeah, yeah. dropping eight in coverage, which he's done a lot more. Uh, this year than he's done in years past. So you're going to get, and of course, with a young quarterback, guys are going to try to confuse yep. him as much as possible. So I think CJ is going to see a lot of different very looks. And I think hopefully it helps from going against Tampa Bay and the looks that they gave us because yep. I think you'll see some of the similar things schematically. How important are disguises 
and not only that, but holding the disguise for as long as possible because it felt like there were a couple times yesterday Baker maybe changed up his snap counter, his cadence, and maybe got a guy to show his disguise, and then he's like, okay, I know what this is, and then he was able to do something. How important are those disguises to your defense and being able to hold them for as long as possible? Yeah, disguises are everything for me. I, I want to make the quarterback figure it out post-snap. Right. So as long as we can hold it, and guys have to be comfortable, right, because sometimes guys get antsy. It's like, oh, yeah, I got to yeah. get down and do my right, job, right. or I got to get back out. So it's all about the comfort level of the guys, mainly safeties, linebackers, moving in sync and moving at the proper time to truly disrupt the quarterback yep. and post-snap, oh, what was that picture? Hopefully it changes on the quarterback to give him give time for the D-line to hopefully affect him as much as possible. Yep. While Dare is unquestionably the unsung hero <laughs> of the game against Tampa Bay, what about Michael Dieter coming in and playing yeah. center for you? Because, I mean, I've lost track, all right? Fourth <laughs> maybe on, the, on those levels, and – you look at all these guys are capable football players, but he's pushed into a situation where you've got to pass protect very well. Right. Dieter did a really good job of stepping up for us. Uh, he uh, communicated really well up front, uh, made some good blocks for us. I mean, you talk about the protection in the passing game and why we were able to throw the ball like we did. It starts with the O-line, and Dieter was the one of the keys to why we were able to throw the ball. So he did a really nice job. And one play I wanted to highlight in our, our team meeting with our guys during that two-minute drive, I think we're out of timeouts, right? Mm -hmm. And so no play more important than the one, I think, in the snow catches the ball over the middle and the C Dieter, right, sprint down and go and get the ball, get the guys off of Noah so we can get it and clock the ball, saving as many seconds as possible. Like, that play right there stood out the most from Dieter, just him being ready for that moment, being on it, and executing. Like, it was outstanding effort by him. He had to go against Vita Vea. So I'm going to ask you a question I asked Indy Kalu today because I'm interested to hear your answer. <laughs> who's, the, who's the most athletic, big-boned player you've ever seen or played with or played against? Because Vea, I, I watch Vea. Vea. Like, you guys kick the extra point when you go in. They do a punt. Vea was the gunner protector he ran with the gunner like 20 yards downfield <laughs> step for step at 350 pounds like that's an athletic dude Hell who's yeah. the most athletic big bone dude you've ever seen uh most athletic i've seen was haloti nada oh yeah, 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 yeah. haloti yeah. was a, a that's really bad dude bad dude big Man. big guy but he's very nimble for yeah. his size all right that leads us to the amogee bank ask coach question of the week and this involves the cincinnati bengals coach because oh. Memory lane, you know I'm going to go down here. <laughs> Is that the most memorable <laughs> win for you in 2011 when you clinched the division for the first wow. time with the last second pass or two seconds left to Kevin Walter? And yesterday kind of reminded me of that because it was a near walk-off <laughs> touchdown by the Texans, and right. it reminded me it was sort of similar. Wow. What are your thoughts? Definitely uh, one of those moments I'll never forget, being in Cincinnati, clinching the division. It was a, a big-time big moment. Uh I just I remember us being able to come back here and we're celebrating. Everybody's mm -hmm. excited. Yeah. You know, first time being in the playoffs, first time winning the division. It's one of those moments you never forget. Exciting time for us. And along, you, along those lines, Coach, yeah. kind of leading to that, the fans in, in 2011, the fans yesterday, we kind of talked about it from a communication standpoint. Yeah. It really hit me when Tank caught his touchdown that made it 23-22. I looked around and thought, man, this is the loudest I've heard this building. <laughs> Were you guys kind of sensing that energy and that juice as well? Oh, I, no doubt about it. I felt the energy. I felt the juice from our fans. Like, it was loud. The loudest it's been all yeah, yeah. year. Like, and like I told you, it affected them offensively. They had to burn the time out because they, getting, they couldn't get the communication in, false starts. Like, man, our fans showed up big yeah. time yesterday, and we're, we're happy to give them an exciting game yeah, to yeah. show up too. hopefully – we don't have, have to be that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but it was awesome. For you mentioned fans. showing them something in the team meeting. And yeah. after a game like this, it's got to be endless. The amount of different things you need to show them because yeah. you can't ignore in victory what you wouldn't in defeat and all of that. So how does that go this week? Because now you're playing the Bengals and they're pretty hot right now as Burrow gets healthier and everything. And you've got a lot to show them this week, but it's a lot more fun after you win, right? Yeah, a lot more fun. <laughs> a, lot, a lot more clips to get through, so I'm spending a little bit more time in those mm -hmm. meetings, but it's fun. Like, when you win, I want to make sure the guys understand, hey, man, every win, right, make sure you guys celebrate it, right, because wins are hard to come by in this league, and I'm going to show you guys all of the great things you guys did to 
lead us to victory. And I want to make sure our guys understand that and see all the good stuff that their teammates are doing. Some of those backside blocks that guys are doing that nobody notices, but they just see a touchdown, but they don't notice the protection by the left guard or right tackle. Like I want to highlight those guys in those meetings because everybody sees a touchdown, but why are we able to make that play? Mm -hmm. It started with the protection. Yep. And so I'm always trying to make sure I highlight everybody in those meetings. Yeah, it's it's got to be something to see it that way. One more for you. How do you keep your emotions in check during a game? Because <laughs> that a game like that especially, that is fast-paced, fast-break football all the way through in the fourth quarter. How do you keep calm? Now, I'm still learning how to keep calm. <laughs> <laughs> there are moments I still kind of probably get too excited, and I have to make sure I'm telling myself to remain focused uh, because there's always situations and things that come up. So excited for the guys when they make those plays, but also calm in the moment because once a big play happens, it's like, oh, what are we doing here on a two-point play? Yep. Hey, we need to kneel this. We need to kick it in the end zone. So there's a lot of decisions going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning as a head coach how to – Calm it down. <laughs> yeah, you took a knee for the conversion yes. right after the yes. touchdown. <laughs> I was right. cheered for you for that one. Yeah. Don't awesome. give them a chance happy. to touch the ball. No, right. Right. Exactly. no chance for them to touch the ball. I mean, we uh, they got a pick on one conversion in there. So it's yeah. like, hey, we don't need anything bad to happen here. All right, Coach. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck against Cincinnati. Thank you, guys.